All right. Welcome back to the NBA Ball Boys podcast. Um, it's good to have you. Uh, Merry Christmas to all, first and foremost. Uh, for me, it is Christmas Eve here in Brisbane, Australia, and I've got some NBA games to look forward to tomorrow and um, some big matchups, as well as some great food presents and, and all the other good things that come with Christmas. So happy holidays to all. I want to make that clear. I hope you have a good time. Now, obviously, we'll get to your fantasy team in check um, over the week. You probably want to be a bit hands-off um, and enjoy the, the holiday season. But look, we'll, we'll start positive first and, and jump into it. Um, first award we're going to, just going to present for the, the week that just passed with some Sweet Sweets Fantasy Awards, the MVP in per game value. I also considered games played. You will notice that Devin Booker is not here, even though he did have that 58-point outburst. That was the only game he played this week. So averaging 58 points, you'd think he'd be number one. But I, I think one game obviously isn't enough uh, to qualify for, for this weekly award. So shout out to these guys here because they killed it. We've got Joel Embiid, Durant, Sabonis, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Tyrese Halliburton, CJ McCollum, Trey Young, Luka Dontich, and Pascal Siakam. Th- these, I guess, are the MVPs. I'll probably pick my, my favorite in a second, but I just want to talk pretty much the stats that they, they put together um, this week. Um, firstly, look, Joel Embiid, he's just been killing it. He's been doing everything you need for a, for a first pick. Um <laughs> Uh, for a first round pick, obviously this is what you want, but I'll just I'll just say a quick highlight: the free throws for him this week, ninety four percent on eleven attempts. So that that's just a a huge huge carry with, with the two blocks there as well, which is awesome. Over thirty points a game. Kevin Durant, um, the steals have come up this week, which is nice. The field goal is awesome at about fifty seven percent, and the free throws as well has been really 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 elite. Um, the thirty points a game as well for him. Um, so bonus man. He's been beasting this week. Um, he has been killing the, the the boards. 20 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists, over 50% field goal, and, and shooting well from the free throw line, up than, than um, his, his usual averages at about 84%. So that's kind of like middle of the pack and also helping your team on the six attempts a game. Also, if you look for the turnovers, which in this I, um, I remained on, that is why he's boosted up because only two turnovers a game. Is, is really, really efficient for him. So, to want a Sabonis, shout out to you, man. You've been a, a beast this week. Um, the Kings are fun to watch. I, I do like that team. I had a good spiel on them last time. So, uh, DeMontis, well, I'm just going to come out and say it. He's my MVP this week. Because uh, the other guys in this list, you know, you could argue, obviously, you, you probably invested some some good stock into. It's only really maybe, you know, Shea and Halliburton and CJ, um, which would be in that same pre-draft order as Sabonis. Um, but it, look, it's rare to see someone put up a 20 and 20 and 10 <laughs> if your name isn't Nikola Jokic. Um, he obviously did cons- um, d- did definitely get some consideration for one of his big outbursts that we'll get into later. Um, quickly on Shea, man, 35 points a game. Again, six rebounds, five assists, 1.7 steals, 1.3 blocks. He just continues just to absolutely fill the stat sheet. Um, well, putting up 35 points, I'll just reiterate that. That is... Just ungodly kind of numbers. He is really proving himself this season, and he probably should be a starter, I think, at this point, um, in terms of the guards' backcourt for the West. Yet to see if that um, that does happen. Um, next, yeah, another point guard, Tyrese Halliburton. He's been scoring this week. He had that one game uh, where he hit 10 threes. I think he ended on about 42 or 43 points. Uh, he's still getting those assists at 8.3. He may not be leading the league in assists anymore. I know there are some guys out there that put a bet on after James Harden today um, with a 20.20 20 assist game. He may overtake. Yet to be determined. I haven't looked into that, but still putting up eight assists a game here. Good field goal. Great free throw attempts. Tyrese really is a great core piece for any team. Um, moving on to CJ. CJ had a, a few good games. He's been solid this week, getting his assist totals up as well. So he's averaging a nice 29 points and nine and a half assists. And, and it helps when you get the close to one and a half blocks as well for him, which has really boosted him um, into this area. Um, Trey Young has had a bit of a comeback week, averaging 32 and 11. So those assists are looking really, really good. 
Um, just like you wanted when you drafted, this field goal hasn't hurt you as much as well, which you'd expect when the points, when, when he's scoring points, his field goal is usually pretty good. Um, Luka Doncic had a, a few outbursts. We know he is a one-man show and he's always up here. Um, nothing really crazy outside of he did shoot free throws nicely this week at nine attempts a game, was shooting about 86%. So that's why he's bolstered up here. Um, and then, look, last but not least, uh, Pascal Siakam had a big, big 50-point game. Uh, he's been killing it. Good field goal. Free throw um, attempts as well, 11 per game this week on 84%. So that, that really does bolster you. So shout out to these guys. As I said, my MVP for the week is Sabonis. Uh, just the fact, putting averaging 20, 20, and 10. Uh, Got to give some respect to the big man. He, he is a guy who... You never want to play in the other if you're on the other team. He's just a beast inside, and he's proven that. All right, we'll move on to something a bit negative. Um, the fantasy loses, unfortunately, to these guys. I'll have to give you some shout-outs. Um, this is the per-game value. Uh, I did take off um, turnovers uh, to have a look at this category. So firstly, look, John Collins. Sorry, man, but... This really wasn't really your week, let's face it. His whole season's been pretty disappointing. The The, the field goals just aren't really there. Um, this is a guy that you were hoping, you know, you'll probably draft around the, let's say, the 60, 70, 80 range. You hope he'd, he'd give you that kind of rep value with the good field goal um, and then the good bit of blocks, points, and rebounds. But look, look this week, eight points, nine rebounds, which is okay, um, but it's just, you know, less than a steal a game. Only one block a game. There's nothing really positive here outside of turnovers. And and that's obviously not a category that <laughs> should be bolstering you. You, you. That is a category a lot of people do like the punt and for these rankings, hence why. I, he has dropped to 111 when you get rid of that. So John Collins, he's on one of my teams. I hope he does pick it up. Um, the next, next two guys are young. It's a bit unfair, if I'm honest. But I thought I'd just talk in them because they have had some better weeks. Um... But look, Jabari Smith hasn't been great this season. I thought I'd just highlight him. Because some people were drafting him around the 100 um, kind of area, hoping that he's going on a a punting Houston Rockets team that should give him minutes, should give him shots. But unfortunately, the backcourt in Houston are really just taking everything. And, um, you know, look, Jalen Green does deserve that. And Porter Jr., it, it's questionable. They've had some good flashy games. But unfortunately, Jabari has gotten the, the short straw out of everything. Um, this week, 12 points, 7 rebounds, um, and which look, isn't terrible. Um, the blocks have been pretty good this week, but look, the field goal really does hurt you. Shooting under 40% this week. The assists are nothing, absolute duds. Steals are pretty much nothing. So there's just a lot of duds there. I thought I'd just flag it because 121, if you take off the turn, sorry, if you leave the turnovers on, because um, he has been averaging 1.8. He does even drop to about the 130 in terms of per game value. So you'd like to get better. I'd like to get him around the 100 um, area. Last but not least would be Evan Mobley. Um, another young guy, as I said, worth a shout out. Wasn't as weak. 11.5 points, 7 rebounds, which isn't too bad, I guess, for a big man. Um, the field goal is okay as well. But look, the free throws have hurt you. The steals and blocks have been nothing. 0.3 and 0.5. So what what you're getting out of a big man if he's really just giving you, you know, 12 points and seven rebounds. It's people in the waiver wire that can do that, and that's why I thought I would highlight this because he's hurting you pretty much everywhere else, sadly. Um that's only this week. I think he will bounce back. Um so it is just a bad week. Um I wouldn't I wouldn't go crazy and put him on the trade block, especially in Dynasty Leagues. I do think that Mobley is a future beast and someone to watch the next few years. All right, here's a, here's a quick segment. Just, uh, we're going to call it Future Dynasty Gem. I, look, I, I won't go as far as saying he's, he's a lock, but I just wanted to say that Killian Hayes is finally showing some life. <laughs> um, a lot of people were saying he's a bust. I was one of them. Um, but with Kate cutting him out and for an extended period... He could be someone that contributes reasonably well, potentially. Um, so he's someone to add to your watch list for now. The last few games, you know, 17, 5, and 5 with two steals. Um, before that was a 12, 2, and 4. He's, he is starting and he's finally somewhat contributing. Um, he did have a 25-point outing recently. 
In terms of rostered, he has jumped up to about 65% rostered. Um, in terms of dynasty, I, I think a lot of people did give up on him, like myself, but he's worth going out there and just picking up and see where this goes. Maybe by the end of the season, he's, he's starting to be a bit more consistent, you'd hope, and then in future rounds. Um, in terms of his future, it probably is capped just because the backcourt, I would imagine, is Ivy and is Cunningham. But it is nice if he does start to shine while Cade's out, and that gives, does give them a, f a few more options of what they can do in the future and see how that all works out from a team dynamic. Because Cade is big enough to guard kind of wing players. Um, so with this playmaking NBA, maybe there is a future for him having reasonable minutes. Um, at this point, I do think he's more of a six-man kind of guy that will run it off the bench. So I'm not going too crazy, but I just wanted the flag that he is not incredibly relevant, but he's on my watch list now. All right, guys, here's a bit of fun. Um, hot topics and breaking news. It's really just a bit of news, what's happening in the NBA. The injury bug has been hit my team hard. I've got this one team, um, which is a dynasty team, where I've got Steph Curry and Anthony Davis. And as you can probably imagine, my team was doing very, very well. I was second in the, in the standings. Being carried by, you know, arguably the two best fantasy players for the season this thus far. But... Anthony Davis goes down. It was inevitable when you own him. I hate owning him. I would love to trade him, to be honest. I should have traded him when he was putting up big stats just because the unreliability in him, it's its just proven. When he plays minutes, he gets injured. It, it honestly sucks. Steph Curry was one of the front runners for the MVP. The only team, the only thing that was affecting him was the team success because he was putting up similar stats to his previous MVP um, I'll say unanimous MVP season, which was about 32, six and six um, for him. So it was sad to see him go down. Um, and then look, I've thrown Maxi Kleber. Obviously, he's not in the same, um, not even in the same kind of league as these other two, but he's out for an extended period. And all these guys are out for an extended period. It's pretty much a month uh, for Davis and Curry. Looks like Kleber could be out for a few months at this point. Uh, I believe it was a hamstring. Could re request surgery, which is not what you want, um, especially if you're the Mavericks, who did rely on Maxi to close games. He was getting blocks. He was relevant in fantasy. He was around the 100 value, mainly on threes and blocks and a trickle of, of rebounds. Um, but now that he's out, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I assume that it's going to, lock in Christian Wood to maybe some more minutes. They could even... I don't know what's going on with the Mavericks. Like, I would imagine he might get some starting. Um, but he's still got a pretty good usage. And it's, it's a bit of a question mark there. So, unfortunate for the injury bug. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is just some... This week has been crazy. It has been absolutely crazy in terms of big, big performances. Um... <laughs> I guess everyone's getting excited leading up to Christmas because, look, Pascal Siakam had that 52-point game. Monster game. Um, they, they ended up getting the dub on that one, so congrats to him. Uh, Luka Doncic with a 58-10 and 10 performance. We know he can do this. It's what he's been doing, um, especially on a team that lost Brunson and, and doesn't really rely on anyone else out of Christian Wood who comes off the bench to really be a reliable scorer. Demonis Sabonis, I spoke about him before. This is his best game for the week. 28, 23, and 7. He also had a, a triple-double in there as well. He's been killing it. That that stat, 28 and 23 is just an absolute beast kind of OG center uh, kind of stat line there. And then, look, <laughs> to, top, to top Sabonis, um, Nikola Jokic pretty much put his hand up and said, what you can do, I can do better. 40 points, 27 rebounds. And 10 assists. Look, to me, that's probably the start line of the year. It was an incredible field goal as well as what you'd imagine from, from Jokic. Um, he, he, whoever thought he wasn't the number one kind of fantasy player, which he hasn't been on a per-game value for this year, um, he put his hand up right there and kind of just reminded everyone of how special he can be in this league. And then, of course, that was Devin Booker's 58-point night which was pretty damn awesome as well, field goal-wise. He was just an absolute bucket. He can have nights like that. That, that That's just proven. Um, so yeah, crazy week in NBA. There was one that isn't here, but I will add to it. Uh, James Harden had a 
it was 20 points, 20, um, 20 assists. It was above that in that spectrum. But for a point guard to get something like that, that is pretty damn incredible as well. So big week in terms of stat lines um, for the NBA. Okay, now for those of you who just want to take your hands off and cruise through this week, I've got some, some ads for you to hopefully win um, the last last week of 2022. Um, so look, firstly... Miles Bridges, he is being added in leagues. He should be, if you've got a bit of a spot, he's worth picking up, um, even if he's out there, just because there's been news that he is now in negotiations with Charlotte for extending his contract. So he could be back. I'm not going to say much more. Look, I would just say that, you know, he got into some trouble. Whatever the judiciary system thought was just, obviously is being carried out. If he's going to come back and play NBA, He's going to come back and play NBA. So you you might as well be aware that he is on the way back in and his fantasy value. He was, he was arguably the second best player out in the Hornets last season. That's what I would have thought field goal wise, points wise. He was really, really, really good. So he's someone to potentially add at this point and see where it goes. Um, Next is Jeremy Sohan. I could have spoken about him when I spoke about Killeen Hayes and I probably should have uh, in terms of the rooks, because he has been really, really good this season. Um, he has, I won't say really good season. He's been really good recently. He he started to get a few more minutes in the starting role, and he's starting to prove himself to be a bit more reliable, um, even even on the offensive end. Like he had a 23, 9, and 6 stat line a couple of days ago. Um, he followed it up today with a 13, 9, and 4 with two blocks. So there's definitely some productive things there, um, especially for someone that does look to be a core, um, definitely a core piece for the San Antonio moving forward. Right now he's 11% rostered. He's definitely out there. In a dynasty league, you you definitely should be going out there to pick him up. Um, I would thoroughly recommend that you do. Um, And and look, next is the Wagner brother, not Franz, but... Moritz, um, I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly, um, but look, he has been performing really well this year. I haven't spoken about him personally, so I thought I'd bring him up. Um, he is 53% rusted on Yahoo. That should be higher because he has been in the top 100 player for the season. He is starting. Um, he's getting reliable minutes. It's always above 25. He's a walking, you know, above 15 points gets your rebounds, can sneak in some some steals as well. Um, the season stats um, currently is 12 and a half, seven rebounds, two assists, which is nice, and then that one steal. Free throw percentage is worth noting because it's actually really, really good. It's over three attempts a game, and he's shooting 93%. So look, that does contribute to a winning team in that aspect. Turnovers are low if you do care about that kind of stuff. So Wagner... Probably someone Mitch has mentioned beforehand, but he's definitely someone that should not be left in any wave while um, for the remainder of the season or until maybe someone steals a starting role from him. But at this point, they kind of like the um, Wagner combo brothers for the forward line. And I love it too. Like, honestly, a bit of a brother on brother is pretty cool. You don't see it too often. Um, Next, Markel Fultz. Similar to Wagner, I thought I would just kind of touch on him. I've got on one of my teams. He is in the starting lineup. Starting again, there were some question marks if that would happen, um, but he's a step straight in. Uh, Cole Anthony has just been on the bench, uh, still performing pretty well, but Michael Fultz is definitely someone who I think has a lot of upside. Got four steals today, eight assists. He's a guy that can be pretty reliable on assists. He should get up to the six assists a game, which is... If anyone's getting that in your wave, why he, he should be picked up. And when it comes to the steals, it, it's, it's just a, one of those things that you can't really find. It's not easy. So Marco Fultz, go pick him up. Um, that's what I would recommend. Right now, it says he's 58% rusted in Yahoo. Um, and then last but not least, Big Walker Kessler. Uh, he, in a dynasty standpoint, definitely would have been picked, I would imagine, or should be picked currently right now he's 60% rostered so he has been obviously on the rise with getting a lot more minutes started um, a couple days ago got a nice 12 points 14 rebounds couple blocks 
he is a guy that will be super reliable in blocks. He's averaging two blocks a game for the season, and, and that's on only the 18-minute output. So now that his minutes are climbing, he will definitely be someone that is very, very relevant in fantasy. Um, so he's, if he's on your waiver wire, please go pick him up. I'm sure probably Mitch would have touched on them previously as well because he's had some good games. And he is looking like a pretty good find. So those U- those Utah boys, man, like that this that, that whole roster you could kind of keep on your wave while we'll see who gets minutes. They seem to chop and change a fair bit. And I guess why why not? There's no are they really contenders? Let's take a step back. They had a good start, but I don't think that was uh sustainable. And they probably will drop in the rankings because I don't I, I don't see them really going for it. You know what I mean? There'll be other teams that could be, could make trades and, and go for it, but we'll see from here. So cool. That's all I've got for you guys. So enjoy your Christmas and hopefully you win your week and um, tune in next time.